There are a lot of elements involved in winning a UFC title, but with Sean O'Malley's fight against Aljamain Sterling, it came down to one technique, the open side counter. To call it a technique might be inaccurate. It is more of a tactic or principle. Like most things in martial arts, it has existed for a long time, but there has certainly been an uptick in its use across mixed martial arts and kickboxing in the past few years. A fighter's stance has an open side and a closed side. The closed side is the side of his lead leg. If you throw punches or kicks to the head or body from this side, he can duck down behind his shoulder and make it difficult for you to hit him anywhere that matters. This could be a textbook shoulder roll or simply a panicked duck. On the open side, all of his upper body is guarded by just his reactions and his rear hand. If you can get him to reach with that hand, you can very easily start to shoot around it and catch him clean. The trick to the open side counter is that in an orthodox versus southpaw matchup, both men's power hands are on the same side. This means that if you can draw your opponent into shooting a hard rear hand punch first, and he doesn't knock you out, you are almost guaranteed a free shot at his jaw on the open side. Most of the fighters who excel at this counter make use of a diagonal retreat to draw their opponent out and really overextend the punch. You will notice that in Sean O'Malley's best examples, his opponents will reach so far that they end up leaving their stance and almost running towards him. In Japanese kickboxing, this counter is all the rage, and one of the most famous exponents was Tenshin Nasakawa. After having no worlds left to conquer in kickboxing, Nasukawa began a boxing career last year and he is still landing the same shot against experienced boxers. Many will remember Tenshin for getting embarrassingly knocked out by Floyd Mayweather in an exhibition match, but give that match up another look. Floyd is arsing around, earning millions of dollars to play around with an undersized kid with no boxing experience. What changes his demeanour? a surprisingly stiff open side counter. The open side counter is a common tool among southpaws, but it becomes even more dangerous if you can switch stances comfortably. Here's the pound for pound number one kickboxer in the world, Chingiz Alazov, rattling Joe Natawat with a combination, retreating into a southpaw stance and firing the open side counter over Natawat's right straight as Natawat fires back. This brings us to Sean O'Malley, who will switch stances to the opposite of whatever his opponent is using. O'Malley often uses his long front kicks to the body to change stances, sometimes even stepping across himself to do so. These front kicks wind the opponent over rounds and encourage them to get one back. Against both Thomas Almeida and Aljamain Sterling, it was a front kick that drew O'Malley's opponent forward onto the open side counter. But against the southpaw Sterling, O'Malley kicked from orthodox and stayed orthodox to keep the opportunity for the open side counter. Against the orthodox Almeida, O'Malley kicked from orthodox but switched to southpaw to open up the open side counter. One of the secrets to throwing O'Malley off has been to switch stances with him and maintain the same stance as him throughout. This denies him the open side counter and opens up the chance to low kick him. Sterling was successful doing this in the first round and Cheeto Vera was doing this perfectly in their first fight. Though Cheeto Vera is the most undeserving title challenger in a while, his success in the first fight makes their rematch this weekend a bit more compelling. I make these videos for fun and they aren't monetized, but you can hear me moaning about whatever dreck is on at the apex each week on my podcast, The Jack Slack Podcast, or on my Twitter. Cheers.